From the shores of Puget Sound, this is Greener Views, a unique media resource for information, education, consultation, and fun. Greener Views is a part of the Healthy Homecast Network and is brought to you exclusively by HealthyPainting.com and AmbrosiaDigitalMedia.com. Each episode will introduce and connect you with services, products, practices, organizations, and groups that focus on the health, happiness, safety, well-being, charity, and community of all. Find us on the web at www.greenerviews.net. And now, your host, Daryl Whalen. Hello, and welcome to episode 29 of Greener Views. I'm Daryl Whalen, along with audio engineer Randy Parcell and video producer Michael Schwartz. On our last episode, number 28, our guest was Eric Lasour from Alki Moves. Joining us this time around is Gina Bordage. So we've had two French Canadians. They got the we're invaded by the French here, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. Uh, we got Gina here from Discover Burian. Green Reviews is a part of the Healthy Homecast Network and is brought to you exclusively by HealthyPainting.com and AmbrosiaDigitalMedia.com. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's get rolling right into things. How I met Gina. Gina's a part of the. Uh, Discover Burian, which I happen to be a member of, and I'm not even exactly sure how I found out about it. Uh, I don't know that it's, it's that important, but uh, we are uh, recording our podcast here in Burian, Burian, Washington. And uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, the Discover Burian is a uh, local... Well, we'll let you talk about what Discover Burian is. <laughs> it's a membership-based merchants association, basically. Very similar to. Okay. We're Can a nonprofit you... that helps educate small business owners in the community and provides networking opportunities and hopefully helps them promote their business to have people come discover them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> and uh, they give, uh, let's see, educational uh presentations and they bring professional speakers in every month and give great stuff for people and uh, they offer the people in the community an opportunity to uh, get to know and hire people that actually live and work in the community mm -hmm. so it's a really uh, it's all it's a real sustainable gig they got there <laughs> yes we what, hope so yeah exactly um, yeah, so uh, so what is your position uh, title and what are your specific roles and responsibilities? I am the new executive director and I basically am the person behind the curtain. <laughs> um, I run and organize all the meetings and then um, we facilitate them and bring in the professionals like you said. Um, I, I look for networking opportunities and we have our members host so that this builds uh, attendance and awareness of their business in the community. Uh, we come up with new, innovative, kind of what we've been calling out-of-the-box promotions that can help small businesses and directly impact their bottom line. Uh, we just did the first ever Cash Mob Burian event this last weekend. And we basically announced on Facebook, hey, we're getting together. We're going to surprise a local business, and we're all going to spend at least $20. And 45 people showed up and spent at least $20 a person in a small business that really needed the help and was very appreciative. And we're going to continue this ball rolling. So cool. that was like one of our out of the box things. We didn't create this idea by yeah. any means, but we were the second Washington and the first hundred in the world. So, wow. yeah, it was a really positive event that got a lot of good momentum. So we hope to keep it going. Cool. Yeah, that's, uh, is it safe to say uh, who the business was? It was Goody Gumdrops, the toy store. Goody um, Gumdrops. We picked right them. Right up the street here. <laughs> it is. It's real close. Um, we picked them because we're one of the only communities that has a small toy store anymore. Mm. And we didn't want to see them go anywhere. Uh, so we, this is why we, they were our first one, first cool. event ever for us. And, uh, I pro maybe the only toy store in the country. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I've been seeing a lot about that on the internet, about the cash mob things. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so it's a big thing. Uh, the great thing is, uh, it's, it's really, really community minded. And I know that you at least, uh, had some input or some support or whatever mm -hmm. of the makeover Burian project. Yes, there was, a. Uh, Another project that we have that we can't sustain every month because yeah. it's so big and we yeah, do yeah. so much. Um, we'll continue supporting the effort, yeah. but we pick a different business in the community 
and then we go in and we make them over not just in their employees but their business storefronts their systems their accounting their legal their websites literally make over their business uh, whatever they need and it's at no cost to them so yeah. it's basically other business owners coming in and donating their services to help another struggling business and uh, we did glass expressions this last time and you were a very big part of it yeah we had a great time yeah and their store absolutely looks tremendous yeah that is a different place a very familiar feel when you still go in but very clean and very new yeah so we were really happy with the results and that again is uh it's it's not a toy store but it's a business that's been in burien for i think 30 35 years yeah. or something like that mm -hmm. and it's uh individuals a couple gals that uh, have owned this thing for yeah i believe it's at least 30 years it's about 30 yeah 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 and uh uh, yeah, I put together a really cool video about it. I don't know if you have seen that yet. I haven't yet seen or not, it yet. I saw the, the first part, I think, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it all the way I'm through. I'm still kind of working on it. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, great. Um, so uh, what about uh, your your specific roles and responsibilities as the executive director? I'm still learning them, but yeah. I've been I've been with Discover Beering for about a year now. I just got the official title about a week ago. I've been interim for about six months. Wow! Well, congratulations. So yeah, thank you. My uh, my board of directors uh, decided it was time to make it official, and so we're moving forward. And uh, my roles are basically whatever it needs to be done for the organization. That's what I'm there to get done. Um, there's a lot of hats to wear. Uh, everything from you know your daily administrative to standing in front of large crowds and giving speeches about why it's important to be a member and how, how important it is for the community and its business members to, to support us. So, mm. so can you tell us uh, about the history of the organization, when it started, mm -hmm. uh, who started it, where did it start? There was, it started in Burien. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a group of business owners got together and in 2002, it officially became a nonprofit. They founded a board and they basically started doing community events that would raise awareness for the business community. These events were created in ways that would draw more people in from other communities and support the people here in this community so that they would hopefully support commerce. They would go shopping, they'd go to lunch. We have the farmer's market we do. Um, so after they're done shopping in the farmer's market, maybe they go across the street to McKellie's and they you know, grab a pint of beer or they go shopping, they do whatever they can, but they stimulate the economy here. So that was the whole purpose behind the founding of Discover Burien, basically to, to help the, uh, the people who would want to visit here learn more and the people who live here gain more from Burien. Cool. Do you know how, how many uh, groups, I hope you know, but uh, <laughs> how might. many groups are, uh, uh, I mean, do businesses and individuals are uh, members of the Discover Burien? Over 200. Yeah, cool. Over 200 businesses. So we hope to have a lot more. Yeah. It's always the intention. I think you've gotten the number up quite a bit just in the we last have. year, haven't you? We have. We yeah. uh, we have some members that you know retire, but then we have a lot of new members yeah. that come in. Uh, so we're hoping to grow the membership base, have the goal to get out there and raise those numbers. And and the more members we have, the more we have to support. So that's our that's our goal. Yeah, and as a and as a as a business person myself, uh, uh, I think that. Not that I think I know that this kind of thing is very, very important, especially in the change of the dynamics of the economy and how we get business and and how we interact in, uh, with other businesses and uh, just uh, with social media and everything. This is like a is a big, big deal. Uh, like I said, the monthly uh, educational things, I've been to a number of those uh, every month. They have gatherings where the businesses and stuff where it's not really uh that particular thing isn't necessarily an agenda, except for to mm -hmm. meet the other people and stuff from the community. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. And uh, as businesses and homeowners and uh, and consumers and everything, we uh, having the best way to do that is uh, is, is a fantastic thing. Mm -hmm. um, so what led you to this kind of work? <laughs> well, well, an interesting long path. Uh, well, I'm third generation Burian, so I was already pre-qualified from birth. Um, I got into small business launching with a franchise organization in Burien, and I came out of basically a marketing broadcasting background, and my job was to be in market expansion and help open these new locations across the country. And I would come in and teach somebody who'd never been a business owner how to basically run a business, how to market it, how to find customers, and then train them, and they would go on and do this, hopefully well. And so from there, I really liked the part very specifically of my job was designing. So I got into graphic design and worked for a company called Sahali Snacks. And we were a gourmet nut company, but when the uh, economy took a turn, 
gourmet products were not the you know best thing that everybody was stocking. So I uh, I left there and um, worked for the B-Town blog. I came back and I said, what would I wake up every morning and do for free? Because that's only my option at the moment. <laughs> and so I went to the B-Town blog because they are, uh, at the time, they represented exactly what I would do. I liked the idea of being really active in my community. So I was there for about a year and through that came this opportunity. So I applied for it and went for an administrative coordinator position because I had the business connections already from the blog and I know enough about the community. I can tell you about businesses three times before the one that's currently in that location. So um, it's been an easy transition and one I really still like. So I'm still happy to be here. <laughs> so Great. And I know one thing that you offer in your position is for people that are members you offer the opportunity to meet with them and to mm -hmm. give them some insight and advice how to, I mean, it's really the great thing about, I mean, one of the many great things about uh, Discover Burien is they're uh, tremendous supporters and cheerleaders for local businesses. Mm -hmm. So they're there to offer uh, support and insight on how to, you know, make them successful. And it sounds like uh, now I know where you got it from. <laughs> Definitely. Because I've had an opportunity to sit down <laughs> and, uh, she kind of blew my mind with all the information that she had, and hopefully I've been applying a little bit of it. Uh, but, uh, well, great. Um, so, uh, so let's see. First, from a, from, a business, from a business owner's perspective, who is the target clientele uh, for Discover Burian? Anyone who owns a business in our community. Uh, we like the idea of, of having members that are large employers because if you support a company like a large store in the Burien, they're still actually supporting the community because they're a big employer and those people live in this area. Yeah. I also like the idea that our other target would be smaller businesses, the independent owner, the mom and pop shop, because we can help get the word out where it's a little harder for them to gain the recognition in the community right away, where we've had the backing and we are established more online and actually in the community and still working to become more established. So they can team up with us as almost a promotional partner and get more exposure and awareness for whatever it is that they sell and the service that they have. So how do the homeowners and residents of, uh, of Burien find out about Discover Burien and what they have to offer to them and uh, mm -hmm. who's involved with that? We do events throughout the community. We do things, like I said, from the farmer's market. We do a big carnivals and car shows. Um, we're also a promotional partner for all the other nonprofits. If they apply, they can be a partner of ours, and we help get the word out about those. Things like Cove to Clover and the Brat Trot and all these other really fun, neat, unique bearing events, we help get the word out about those. So residents really can come out and experience their community, experience what the businesses have to offer, because a lot of them are sponsors, and, and just take part in being out from behind the computer all the time and really be a part of the community. So that's another relationship that we're trying to foster. So just really experience the town that you live in. Yeah, great. Yeah, we had John Nelson on the show not too long ago. In fact, uh, Michael went out and uh, videotaped, uh, I think, most of the run. And uh, from what he told me, it was very successful. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people showed up to that thing. Um, so from your perspective, why is this, why is Discover Burian important? And what benefit does it serve? I think it's important because we provide the connection between, or we facilitate the connection between the different businesses. We have members that actually only recommend other members that actually go out and experience their service and then refer them out word of mouth. And there's no better marketing than a recommendation from a friend. And when you really get to build that relationship with the other owners in the community, the word goes out to their customers and then it just kind of virally spreads from there, but very organically and not very contrived, which is an easy way to say the internet sometimes can do. Um, but you really get a one-on-one -on -one personal connection with these people, and it's really about relationship building instead of selling. So that's really what we're trying to facilitate. So that's why it's so important and really pivotal in the community to have a group like ours. And uh, let's see, from your perspective, mm -hmm. uh, what are you most passionate about as it relates to this work? I like being a connector. Yeah. I personally like saying, oh, you know who I know. <laughs> I like doing that. It's It's a just something in my personality and I, I really like making a recommendation. I like being the person that knows something and people come to for information. And now I get paid to be that, so a little spoiled in that aspect. But yeah, that's I really like being the, the connector and relationship builder. <laughs> well, when it relates to business, that's pretty important. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so is there like a mission statement or some kind of motto? It is. For it's Discover Burian? to sustain a vibrant uh, community, sustain and build. Oh, you're going to. 
have me memorize it. It's all over all of our collateral. We're actually in the process of revisioning. Okay. And our first draft, literally right now as it sits, is Making Burian Awesome. That's our new one. Okay. We're leaning towards that, and it'll be somewhere in there. Um, but it's basically to ignite a, a vibrant community and, and take pride in all of our diversity and really promote what it is to be Burian. That's our new direction of the vision statement. But essentially, that's what the old one says, but the new one's a little more fun. Yeah. So we're working on the new one. I say awesome a lot, but I thought that was outdated. But yeah. Who knows? We weren't sure if it was too antiquated of a word, if it's too trendy, or if it was trendy and we're all just a little older than we should yeah. be. But we Maybe like the idea. Maybe it doesn't really matter. Maybe not, because yeah. it really is the backbone of what we yeah. want to do. Can awesome ever really be a bad thing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So... Um, yeah, I, we, I was actually talking with uh, Michael about this before the show, and do you, are you aware of, uh, well, first of all, outside of Burien, are you aware of groups and organizations mm -hmm. similar to this in other cities? Yeah, there's actually a neighborhood one that's to our sister neighborhood, White Center, White Center Community Development Association. They have these groups all over the place. Yeah. Um, they're usually a chamber of commerce if they're bigger than us, but we're not an official chamber. And we have a great chamber that covers this area, the Southwest King County Chamber of Commerce. They are they cover a wide area of ours. And so we partner with them a lot for things. Uh, to be a chamber, you're more of a political affiliation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're not. Yeah, I think this is a lot different. Yeah. Personally, it's a lot better. It's a little more lighthearted, a little less of a business yeah. um, official push. We're very casual in our networking. We don't yeah, yeah. make people do speeches or yeah. we don't have a really strict format. We have wine and beer and snacks and business cards and go yeah. have fun and have friends so um i like i like our format a lot but uh there are a lot of other community groups and organizations that do what we do and they're small and you'll find them in neighborhoods rather than big cities yeah they like to promote the west seattle has one i know capitol hill has them um so neighborhoods would be more what they focus on because discover or Burien itself is actually only about 19 right now 20 maybe i think 19 this year so yeah. we're fairly young still yeah so one day maybe we will need a chamber, but right now I think that we're a perfect fit for that. Yeah. Yeah, Michael said there's a good one in Fremont too. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about that. Great. Uh, let's see. So uh, do you have any connection with any of the other groups? Do you talk with any of these people? Or the is White there any Center. type of communication with the White Center? Yeah, the White or? Center one I go to because there is a potential that we will be, you know, part, yeah. you know, we'll the absorb them. The annexation thing has been a it's really a hot topic, yeah. yeah. Um, I I don't know personally what I'm going to say if I stand one way or the other. I, I grew up going to Burien schools, and then for high school I went to Evergreen. The boundary changed. So yeah. I, I really am familiar with the White Center community almost as much as Burien. And... I go to their business launches. I go to their networking groups. I'm a part of their Jubilee Days uh, as much as I can be. Um, but they have a really vibrant and unique community over there. Yeah. And so, I, you know, it's neat to be a part of it and even to be asked to be there. So um, to learn as much as I can about their community organization, if they have become part of Burien, I hope to merge the two without getting rid of anything yeah. and just build both of them up. Yeah, and they're so close. They too. really are. <laughs> I, we're going to have two downtown corridors if we annex. So. So um, what would you say is the uh, state of the, the group's development? We are in a really good place right now. Uh, we are going to be moving to a new location and hopefully opening our first ever visitor center that's right in the center of Burien. We are going to be overlooking the library and city hall and the new town square and right to the mouth of the farmer's market, which we do. So uh, we're in what I would call a progressive growth position. Uh, we have some new board members and some existing ones with great experience. And so we're really building on what was established and really moving forward with it. When do the farmer's markets start, by the way? I was just On curious. May 3rd. Oh, yes, sweet. May 3rd. They start early May and they end at the end of October. Great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see. How do people uh, get involved from the business perspective? I imagine you could probably go on discoverburian.org or is dot it? Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> I'm not sure that there's a legal designation for either one anymore. Know. That's um, just my old school like thinking. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, but so discoverburian.com? Dot com. Okay. And uh, there's an About Us page. You can learn about our board members. You can learn about all of our events, all of our partners' events, the city's events. Um, all of our membership is on there. Uh, and then also a join page if they're interested in joining. Yeah. There's a form on there they can download, or they can just call the office and get me, and I'll answer any questions they need. Yeah, and anybody that's interested in joining that's in this area, by the way, I mean, we broadcast everywhere, but we, you know, part of this uh, 
the part of the reason that I had asked you to participate in this is not only because of the fact that, uh, um, you know, that we do uh, record in Burien and I'm a <laughs> Burien business business person. And mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's really, uh, you know, wanting to uh, educate and inspire people no matter where they're at mm -hmm. to get involved in this type of stuff. And uh, but uh, uh, what I was going to say is that. Uh, I imagine that anybody that wants to get involved or come up to an event or whatever, whether they're a member or not, mm -hmm. I, is, is pretty much welcome. And as a matter of fact, that's how I initially became a part of Discover Beery. And I went to a, a really cool uh, social networking event that you had mm -hmm. over in the library. Mm -hmm. And uh, I joined like, I think I joined like that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've been, you know, fairly active ever since. Mm -hmm. We try to pick topics for those events that our members ask us for too and social media being that it ever changes we're actually hosting another one because as soon as we were done with that one if you remember they they changed the social media platform we talked about so oh that was uh the social bees or something yeah. like that they're that, coming yeah. back to reteach the new format so Great. we'll keep them coming back every time there's changes so they'll be a frequent teacher and uh so we know as as, as from the perspective of a resident that uh there's they would do the same thing mm -hmm. but then uh, look for them at uh any of the uh, stuff that we had mentioned? Mm -hmm. Any of our events were out there. They can ask about other businesses if they're just a resident. Um, they're more than welcome to join, even as just a person who lives here who just wants to be more informed. We take uh, we have a membership level that's you know fairly inexpensive that they can do, and everything that they pay for for us is also a tax deduction because yeah. we're a nonprofit. So um, it's a good way to stay involved and, and learn more about what's continually going on in the community because we have weekly bulletins and newsletters and an ever-updating website. So lots of social media involvement you'll find probably the most frequent updates on our social media just because it's so easy to use yeah and i think uh it's safe to say that the b-town blog is still pretty uh, yeah. connected and it's they pretty are. much interconnected and stuff they do a great job of helping us promote our events yeah great um see i already told you i messed up here down here i didn't <laughs> i didn't clear up uh welcome uh so let's see we're going to take a very short break and be right back with the rest of the interview you are listening to Greener Views. Gravity connects me to the earth, which connects me to people who connect me to myself more honestly. And gravity connects me to the crust, which connects to the leaves on the trees that make it possible to breathe. with naive mind shield like a helmet they would tell us that we don't know how we feel or how to connect with other people on the planet oh if we only knew the power in each blue dissolution little in the vision of one resides all destroy the individual for this is critical the self ain't everything has to grasp to cling to mask material vastly shipwrecked beings at last, release the greed amassed with capitalist tasks and contact. The mass communication is all we have in dwindling fast. Welcome back to episode 29 of Green Reviews and our conversation with Gina Bordage from Discover Beer. And I didn't update that part, <laughs> but I did remember. This is the point in the interview that we veer away from the conversation that it's exclusively about the, the, the organization that you're here representing as we learn about that, which has made you the unique person that uh, that people have been finding out that you are and that I already know that you are and people will learn more about. Uh, so to begin with, what, who or what would you say has been the greatest influence on your life so far? Greatest influence. I'm going to have to say my dad. <laughs> He's got to be one of my closest friends. He grew up here. He's just the most giving, most understanding, shirt off your back kind of guy. Um, a lot of my brainstorm inspirations come from him, so I can't take a lot of credit for some of them. Um, yeah, he's been he's been there for me for everything. Wouldn't for him, I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing today. So Great. Uh... So without regard to subject matter, what authors or books uh, may have been an inspiration to you? Uh, Tom Feltenstein. Um, <laughs> that's a very specific author. Okay. He's actually someone who is 
title is the father of neighborhood marketing. Oh, cool. So that's where all my marketing research and experience started. And I got to meet him in person at an international franchise convention one year. And I think I was his only uh, professional groupie. Yeah. I was kind of following him around at the different seminars. And yeah. he's like, you have been in every class up front. I'm like, I'm just so excited to meet the guy who wrote all those books. And he, I was absolutely awkwardly a nerd the whole time. But yeah. um, he has got some great just out of the box ideas. And he started this marketing, this neighborhood word of mouth marketing thing far long ago. It's what he's actually the guy who got McDonald's to be get to where they are. So um, the idea was just about to get your big box store to feel like a neighborhood location. So I don't know. I just thought that was very interesting. Cool. Are there any others? Um, <laughs> Not that there has to be, but there, oh, I'm trying to think. Um, I, I read a lot of uh, historical things. Um, I sons of prophets from Seattle. Um, I forget his name. Oh my goodness. He's a Seattle times or PI reporter, I believe. Um, but that I'm kind of a history buff of the Northwest. So just for fun, I, I like to read all the, the awkward history, not the stuff in the textbooks, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the stuff that's a little more on the different side. <laughs> not the stuff on the underground Seattle tour. Some of it. Well, yeah, it's a little beyond that, but yeah. 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 But <laughs> yeah. Some of that's cool too. Some of it's cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, a little deeper into it. Yeah. yeah gotcha. So, uh, uh, what's, are there any specific movies or filmmakers or actors that have been inspirational to you? Uh, in recent years, one called Forks Over Knives. Oh, yeah, I have it. I love it. I'm a little bit of a uh, an alternative thinking health-wise yeah. person. I guess it wouldn't be alternative because it's just about health. But yeah, yeah. there's a lot of documentaries about how food can make you feel better. Yeah. And uh, that's been the one that's stood out to me the most in the last couple of years. Great. Uh, what about specific songs or musical artists that have been inspirational to you? <laughs> oh, let's see. I would dance around my house when I was little to Michael Jackson and Madonna. <laughs> I was into really Who bad. Didn't? Yeah, I was into bad pop music as an early yeah. teenager, which a lot of people were. Um, bad is subjective. But... Bad being, well, now looking back, it's, <laughs> I would be less loyal, I suppose, yeah. now. But, um, they, uh, there's no real one band, but um, I have a friend who has a band in the neighborhood called Nearly Brave, or used to be Nearly Brave. I think it's the Jordan Biggs band now, but absolutely love their music, and they're on our local internet radio station too. So, Cool. So what about for yourself? Do you have a personal motto or mission statement for yourself? Um, nothing specifically. I just kind of have a, a scope of an idea that I, I like to go by to be to always be understanding, to always try to put yourself in someone else's shoes no matter what and to really just be a teacher and connector um, and someone who's always reliable. So try to stick within those parameters, always honest. So no matter how hard that can be sometimes, <laughs> stick to that, you'll get by. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay. What do you see as the main responsibility we have to ourselves during our lifetime? To treat yourself the best you can, to doubt yourself a heck of a lot less, mm. and to believe in yourself a lot more because it's so easy to be your worst critic and to wake up every day just with your hardest challenges yourself and wake up and just believe you can. And then if you don't, you can the next time. Just constantly keep moving forward. Great. Um, what do you see as our responsibility to our planet? <laughs> Personally? Personally. I think that um, changing the way that we eat and changing the way that our food is made, I don't necessarily think a vegan diet is perfect for everyone. I do think that an honest view and a real education on where the food comes from and people who are responsible for giving us that food have to be honest and demanding answers on having that information revealed um, and allowing us to make the right choices. Yeah. Making healthy, responsible food available to everybody on every economic level, not just the cheap manufactured chemical stuff. Yeah. Well, that's a great answer. Um, there's a tremendous uh, connection with our food and our planet, our environment, our yeah. social and all that stuff. Uh, I would love mm -hmm. to have more people like that. And I plan to in the future on the podcast. Uh, so in your opinion, what is one thing that a person could do that is likely to have the most positive impact in life, in their lives, or in, in life in general. In life in general? Yeah. Be vegan for a year. If you can do it for a year, you can do it for longer. Um, just for a year. <laughs> um, but try it out. I think that the environmental side effect of it is a positive thing, and you don't even have to try. It's just there. It comes with it. It changes your entire health outlook, your energy level, um, your, your cognition. Everything changes, and it's almost hard to explain unless you do it. Yeah. So um, I'd say you have to be vegan for at least a year of your life. 
Well, I'm going on seven months, 100%. Congrats. Yeah, it's the longest I've ever gone. Uh, great. Um, and that wasn't rehearsed or that has nothing to do with this uh, podcast, but I'm a supporter of that answer 100%. Uh, <laughs> so before we wrap it up here, let's take care of some of the logistics. Uh, as to the best way for others to check out uh, what you do, I'm referring mm-hmm. to uh, Discover Burian. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you want to talk about your personal blog at all, you want <laughs> I have one that I haven't really populated yeah. much. I'll eventually have a food blog that talks about uh, converting from somebody who ate an average American diet to yeah. somebody who has had to go into a grocery store, which was my favorite place, and now just relearn it yeah. from scratch. Um, but that's <laughs> somewhere down the road. Yeah. And there's a lot of good blogs out there there's already. A lot. If it wasn't for bloggers, I don't think I could have stayed being vegan. Yeah, honestly. yeah. Um, so as far as Discover Beer and which uh, contact phone numbers, email mm-hmm. addresses, web links would you like to share? We have, uh, you can always email info at discoverbeerian.com. You can call us 206-433-2882 or visit us online at discoverbeerian.com. That's B-U-R-I-E-N for, for those anyone who, who hasn't know. been here. Yeah. Exactly. So let's see, thinking about at least, uh, let's say two weeks out. Mm-hmm. Are there any upcoming events, special offers, or information that you'd like to share at this point? We have uh, monthly educational networking events that come up that are always updated on the website. Uh, But in April, on April 28th this year, we're doing Clean Sweep, where we ask the whole community to come out, business owners, residents, people from beyond the uh, residential community, come out, help us clean up our city. Um, It's a really, really great turnout, a really good community building event. And uh, it's always fun. And yeah. you, get, you get free lunch and coffee in the morning. And Unfortunately, it's yeah. not much of a vegan lunch. Yeah, it's not much of a vegan lunch. <laughs> yeah. You can always bring your own yeah, fruit. Yeah. <laughs> but it is a really cool thing. I did mm-hmm. it last year, and uh, it was a Saturday. And I think it was maybe, a, not, it was really just barely over a half a day. Mm-hmm. And uh, people meet, and they section people off, and they go through, uh, I, I think it's like the main, like mainly traveled sections of the mm-hmm. city. and. Uh, it, it's really, it's really, really a cool fun event. We've had people call us up from a little bit outside of where we go to and say, you know, we just have a really bad corner where it, it tends to collect crash. Can you come over yeah, for yeah. a day? And so we'll send a group out there. Cool. And you're the facilitators for that. Our event coordinator, Deborah Georges, but yeah. I, I help whatatever she needs if yeah. she needs it. <laughs> and she is an amazing gal. She is. I don't know how <laughs> she, she does it. <laughs> she's got a lot of stuff to uh, talk about or participate, I'm sure, in the mm-hmm. podcast in the future. Um, <laughs> So, and lastly, uh, yet certainly not least, do you have any wise advice, helpful hints, or final words to leave us with? (laughs) Um, Always, you know, we're always out there if you're a small business owner. Um, Come to us or a community like us, an organization like ours, and uh, and don't be afraid to try it. Um, I think that there is support for people who want to be a business owner, and uh, there's a community of people who want to buy your product or service, so... Yeah, it's an extremely, extremely manageable uh, thing to do, and uh, I, I personally endorse it as a member, card-carrying <laughs> member. Yep. I don't even think I actually have a card, but anyhow. <laughs> we should get membership cards. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, super. Well, thanks so much. So so you've been listening to episode 29. I didn't have that written down. Green interviews. We'd like to thank this episode's special guest, Gina Bordage, for helping us and joining us. Uh We love you and thank you for sharing a bit of your world through this podcast interview. We hope you enjoyed your time spent with us Mm -hmm. here. Uh, On our next show, our next episode, number 30, we'll talk with Gretchen Stewart from the TM4 group about training and educating individuals, groups, uh, organizations, and businesses in environmentally important matters, Uh, uh, green building, uh, uh, lead lead containment and uh, lead EPA issues. It's, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, that's something that's uh, really uh, associated with my business a lot, uh, amongst other things, I'm sure. On behalf of myself, Daryl Whalen, and our crew, our uh, posse, that, that they were breakdancing during the last hip-hop break. Uh, Randy Parcell and Michael Schwartz, we like to say a heartfelt thank you to them. And uh, Special consideration goes to AmbrosiaDigitalMedia.com. Please check them out. Music for this and every episode is provided with permission by John Henry Scully at SlapJazz.com, Dan Fagens at (laughs) DanFagens.Bandcamp.com, and J.D. Hobson at JDHobson.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts on ideal guests and topics for the show. You can email us 
at info at greenreviews.net or call 206-650-4587. Make your day extra special, not that it isn't special enough, by checking out greenreviews.net and youtube.com slash greenreviews for the video version of our episodes where you'll find uh, our videos and more important information over the upcoming weeks. And lastly, Greener Views is part of the Healthy Homecast Network. So please go check out the other like-minded podcasts and businesses over at HealthyHomecast.com. Thank you to everyone who has made this podcast possible. And uh, here is to the health, happiness, and well-being of all. Bye-bye. Michael makes us wave. <laughs> that's, so, that's so cute. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you for listening. Greener Views is part of the Healthy Homecast Network. Check out all their conscientious and sustainably focused podcast programs and businesses at HealthyHomecast.com. Greener Views is created, developed, and produced by Daryl Whalen. Our audio engineer is Randy Parcell. Our video producer is Michael Schwartz of AmbrosiaDigitalMedia.com. Music for this episode was provided by SlapJazz.com, DanFagens.BandCamp.com, and JDHobson.com. Your feedback is important. Please feel free to contact us with any comments or questions, including suggestions for guests and program topics. You can call us at 206-650-4587 or send a direct email to info at greenerviews.net. Be sure to check back often. New episodes coming soon.